the Democratic Party. They fight just as much as the real housewives of Atlanta, only they get less done. For months now, President Biden has been trying to pass a major spending bill that includes every single priority for the Democrats, funding childcare, tackling climate change, organizing a search party to find Kamala Harris, but the bill is being blocked by two senators, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. And after weeks of negotiations, tensions are getting really high. Frustration on Capitol Hill as lawmakers still can't come to a deal on President Biden's government overhaul spending plan. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi delayed a vote saying there was not enough support. At least two Democrats opposed the plan. They say $3.5 trillion is simply too costly. Protesters arrived by small boats and kayaks at Manchin's houseboat in Washington, D.C. to voice their frustrations. On Sunday in Arizona, activists followed Senator Kirsten Sinema into a ladies' room, angered by her opposition to a three point five trillion dollar social policy bill. We need solutions to build that better plan. We knocked on doors for you to get you elected and just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but like I'm all for holding officials accountable. On the other hand, though, I think following someone into a bathroom at work might be a step too far. I mean, the office bathroom is is a sanctuary, you know? It's a little oasis where you can just take a few minutes out of your day to do your business. Check your phone, you know, watch an entire season of Squid Game. And you know who really impresses me is all those people who were using the bathroom while this was going on. I mean, I can't imagine that level of focus. If a coworker even tries to talk to me at the urinal, I can't pee for the rest of the day. But I do understand the frustration here, right? This is probably the only chance the Democrats have to pass so many of their big priorities. And just these two people are standing in the way of the whole thing. I mean, this is why Joe Manchin has the right idea, right? If I pissed off as many people as he did, I'd live on a houseboat too. Well, sorry for killing that bill. I'll see you in international water, losers. Ha, 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 ha. All right, but let's move on to our next story, which is about oil. It's Earth's lube. And right now, it's lubing up all the wrong places. Urgent efforts off of Southern California. Crews working to contain a major oil spill, one of the largest there in recent history. At least 126,000 gallons of oil leaking into the Pacific. The source believed to be a pipeline four and a half miles offshore. The area impacted a 13 square mile stretch between Huntington and Newport Beach. People urged to stay away from the beaches. Images coming in late today of oil washing ashore. Officials say they have stopped the flow, but warnings tonight of a potential ecological disaster. Okay, look guys, I'm no scientist, but I feel like the last thing a state that's currently on fire needs is a wave of oil washing towards it. I mean, pray those wildfires don't reach the ocean or the whole state is gonna be fried worse than Dog the Bounty Hunter. Like, why can't California's disasters cancel each other out for once? You know, just one time. Like, why can't there be a major flood that puts out the wildfires? or an earthquake that swallows up the hype house. And I feel terrible for those birds covered in black oil. You know, not only is their health in danger, but they're also in danger of getting canceled on Twitter. I will say though, the good news is, with the price of gas right now, they're probably gonna get a lot of volunteers to clean this mess up. Yeah, people are gonna be ringing seagulls over their gas tanks like, come on, I just need enough to get to work, come on! And you know what's especially awful about this? Is that animals only see the downside of oil. In fact, that's the reason I think that every animal that gets covered in an oil spill, they should get a free Dodge Durango. It's comfy, right? Yeah, now you see why we keep doing this. All right, and finally, let's get into the video that everyone is talking about on TikTok. You know, the app where people watch 10 second videos for 15 hours straight. Right now, one of those videos is the subject of the most intense forensic investigation since the Kennedy assassination. I am officially hooked on the saga of Couch Guy and I'm not alone. The original video has been viewed 50 million times alone. This is it, it shows a young woman named Lauren surprising her boyfriend at college. His name is Robbie, that's him in the red on the couch. The video is dividing the internet. Many people saying he is not happy enough to see her. One comment saying red flag, he did not get up and jump out of the window in excitement. Another saying 
He looked like he hugged her like she was his aunt at Christmas dinner. But TikTokers are digging deeper into the mystery here, saying that when Robbie bends over, okay, you can see it in slow motion here, the girl sitting next to him on the couch sneakily passes his cell phone underneath his arm. It's like... All right, there his yeah. arm goes to the side of his pants. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why did she have the phone in the first place? Why did they have to hide that she had it? That's shady. Other TikTokers analyzing the girl on the couch's movements when Lauren walks in, okay? They're saying it's weird that she felt like she needed to scoot away, not once from Robbie, but two times. As of this morning, though, Lauren is still defending him on her TikTok, so... Wow. This is so intense. And look, I know everyone's having fun with this story, but you got to feel for this couple. You know, because normally, the people who come under this level of scrutiny, they're mega celebrities. You know, people are uh, acting like they're Brangelina or Kim and Kanye, but they're just a normal couple that's gonna break up. But if we are gonna get into this, this might not be a popular opinion, but I am siding with Couch Guy here. Yep, I said it. Yes, maybe he could have been more excited, but in his defense, you have to remember these are COVID times and she just got off a plane. So even if he's really happy to see her, he's probably thinking, is it okay to hug her? Was she tested? Is she gonna give COVID to my side chick? I mean, for real guys, what we need to remember here is how jarring it is to see somebody out of context. It doesn't matter who it is. It's gonna throw you off. Like if my mom showed up right here, right now, I wouldn't be like, mom! I'd probably be like, whoa, wh what? Mom? Uh, what are you doing? Am I in trouble? What happened? Did I leave the stove on again? So I don't think his, his delayed reaction is damning evidence here. What is damning evidence is that he's sitting next to a guitar. Yeah, because I'm sorry, people, but if you're in college and you're sitting next to a girl and you've got a guitar next to you, you're definitely trying to smash. I mean, that's a rule, isn't it? That's the law. Why else do people buy guitars? <laughs> Not to play them. <laughs> Every day, more and more companies are announcing a vaccine mandate for their employees. And if you work at one of those companies and you don't wanna comply, there are a couple of options for you. You can find a new job, you can hide in the office bathroom until 2027, or you can follow the hot new trend, claiming a religious exemption. A growing number of people are claiming religious reasons to dodge COVID vaccine mandates. In Washington, thousands of state workers are doing it. 419 DC fire and EMS employees are asking for a religious exemption. That's about one out of five of the department's employees. One of the largest districts in the country, Montgomery County, their public school is now facing a lawsuit for not having a religious exemption. This morning, at least seven United Airlines employees filing lawsuits against the airline over its vaccine policy, saying there were religious exemptions were denied. The NBA denied the request of Golden State Warrior Andrew Wiggins to be exempt from vaccine requirements. The 26-year-old based the request on a religious exemption. As the COVID-19 vaccine mandate deadline for City of Los Angeles employees looms, 2,600 LAPD officers said they will seek religious exemptions to refuse the vaccine. That's right, 2,600 LA police officers are trying to get a religious exemption to avoid getting the shot. And black people heard this and they were like, hey, can we get an exemption too? We also have a deep belief in not getting shot. But this is where we're at right now. Countless people across America who have already been vaccinated, by the way, for a million other diseases are now professing a very, let's say, convenient religious belief against taking the COVID vaccine. And you might be seeing this and thinking, damn, religious exemptions seem like a really bad idea. And maybe, maybe it's turned into that now but it wasn't always this way. In fact, we'll look at how a good idea went so wrong in our brand new segment, Red, White and Broken. For most of human history, religious freedom was not a thing. Most governments had a state religion and if you didn't believe in it, you either prayed very quietly or you burned at the stake very loudly. But America's founders didn't want a country torn apart by religious conflict. So when they wrote the constitution, they guaranteed freedom of religion in the first amendment. That's why they put it at the top of the constitution because of how important they thought it was. And also because they knew nobody reads past page two. Now, this was an incredibly progressive idea at the time. And today we think of it as one of the greatest ideas from that era. 
I mean, it's certainly much better than the idea that you shouldn't leave the house without seven layers of clothing. It's summer, at least take off the wig, you freak. So part of that religious freedom meant that the government can't force you to do things that your religion forbids you from doing. For instance, if you're a devout Quaker, you don't have to fight in a war. If you're Amish, you don't have to send your kids to high school. If you're a Latter-day Saint, you don't have to come into work until later in the day. Well, that's not what it is. Yeah, but Steve told me that that's why he comes in at 3.30. God damn it, Steve! But when vaccines became widespread, it turned out some religious people had objections to those too. And that's when things started to get messy. Not even really till the 20th century that we start to see people using religion as a basis for opposing a vaccine. And it doesn't really pick up steam until the 1950s and 60s. It all takes root in the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The law essentially requires employers to make reasonable accommodations for employees who can't fulfill a job requirement due to religious beliefs. But the law doesn't give a lot of guidance when it comes to defining religion. According to rules laid out by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, a religious belief does not have to be recognized by an organized religion, and it can be new unusual or seem illogical or unreasonable to others. In 2012, a U.S. district court ruled that veganism was a sincerely held religious belief which gave one employee a pass from a flu shot. Yeah, you can laugh. But I can see how veganism could be considered a religion. I mean, think about it. They're super dedicated, they follow strict rules, and they think anyone who doesn't share their beliefs should go to hell. You know, in fact, now that I think about it, my vegan friends talk way more about being vegan than my Christian friends talk about Jesus. Like, I don't even know what church Dave goes to, but I know exactly what Mariah had for lunch. The point is, America got into a situation where it was giving exemptions for religious beliefs while being very open-minded about what a religious belief was. And look, there are good reasons why you don't want the government picking apart every religion like it's a cheating boyfriend on TikTok. You'd rather have the government say veganism is a religion than have the government say veganism isn't a religion and also neither is Islam. Unfortunately though, the flip side of being that tolerant is that people can take advantage of the system. You know, it's like how when airlines didn't define what an emotional support animal was, at first you had genuinely traumatized people bringing their pets on the plane. But then before long, I was fighting an alligator for an armrest. Can you tell me again what this animal is helping you with? Because he's giving me anxiety, man. So, because the government chose not to nitpick what a religious belief could be, it didn't take long for the idea of religious exemptions to start showing cracks. Because of vaccines, we were able to do something that is hardly ever done, which is to actually eliminate a disease. We eliminated measles in the United States in the year 2000. And all of a sudden, everything changed. State of emergency that's been declared as the nation faces one of the worst measles outbreaks in decades. In 2000, about 1% of Oregon kindergartners were not fully vaccinated for philosophical or religious reasons. Last year, it jumped to 7%, the highest rate in the country. In Vermont, there was a 640% increase in kindergarten children with religious vaccine exemptions. The fact that we have had so many cases in 2018 is really Really quite discouraging. This is a completely avoidable situation. Oh man, poor Dr. Fauci. <laughs> this guy has spent his whole career trying to convince people that dying from disease is bad. COVID, measles. I bet if you went back to the 14th century, there was a Dr. Fauci begging people not to get the Black Plague. People, please. Don't have sex with those rats. This is a very avoidable situation. So thanks to those religious exemptions, measles became the throwback fad that nobody asked for, which is not fair to everyone else. And it's definitely also not fair to measles. I mean, think about it. Measles has been retired all these years and then suddenly it has to start working again. And all because kindergartners have philosophical objections to the vaccine. I mean, I'm pretty sure the only philosophy that a kindergartner has is, we should turn on Paw Patrol. I mean, think about how crazy it is that in America, you can send your kids to school with measles, right? But if they bring peanut butter with them, their little ass is getting thrown out in the snow. And it turns out that the same way Sarah Palin was just a trial run for Donald Trump, the measles anti-vaxxers were just a trial run for COVID. 
because now even more people are seeking religious exemptions from vaccines. And they're finding a lot of help from their fellow worshipers online. We found websites that help people request exemptions. One urge include words like sacred, holy, worship, blessed, and others. Thousands of Facebook users are actually teaching each other how to obtain religious exemptions from the vaccine. These are folks who are swapping tips, who are showing each other how to evade uh, filters. On Instagram, the lead pastor of Destiny Christian Church issues an open invitation to anyone seeking religious exemption. If you feel morally compromised, by taking this vaccine. We have a form for you. Numerous churches across the country are offering the same. We found a self-described evangelist offering vaccine exemption letters to anyone who wants one. Curious, our producer emailed her. He's fully vaccinated already, by the way. She offered to write letters not just for him, but three family members once he PayPal'd her at least $25. $10 minimum donation for each additional family member after that. This woman says she's a Christian. Our producer is Jewish. No questions asked about religion or medicine or anything. Wow, okay. That's not exactly the interreligious harmony that I've been hoping for. And as shocking as it may seem, I think it's pretty obvious that some religious leaders are gonna try to keep people unvaccinated. I mean, after all, they make money from getting the letters and then they make a ton of money from doing the funerals. But still, it doesn't take a genius to see how the great idea of religious freedoms has been corrupted. You know, the question used to be, do you have a sincere religious belief? And now it's, do you have a PayPal account? And the reason that people need to work so hard to cheat the system with fake religious beliefs is that basically every actual religion has told its followers to get thine ass vaccinated. Faith organizations have come out to say the benefits of getting the vaccine far outweigh any ethical concerns about its development. Jewish scholars say the Torah requires it. Muslim leaders endorse it too, leaving legitimate religious excuses to skip the shots far and few between. Today's sermon, or khutbah in Islam, is Imam Karai Assam's fact check for the faithful. This vaccine is absolutely halal. The COVID-19 vaccines got a holy endorsement on Wednesday. Pope Francis told reporters that humanity has a history of friendship with vaccines and urged everyone to get their shots. In India, the Dalai Lama getting his first coronavirus vaccine shot, the Tibetan spiritual leader urging his followers to do the same. Have courage to take this injection. Yeah, leaders of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism all agree that there's nothing in religion that stops people from getting the vaccine. Now we just need Beyonce to put out a statement and then all religions are covered. But think about how crazy it is to have all the major religions saying there's no religious objection to the vaccine. These guys don't agree on anything. Hell, Buddhists believe that the middle seat of an airplane is one of the best. Free yourself from the desire for an aisle seat. The only window that matters is the window in your mind. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Excuse me, excuse me, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, watch, watch the rope, please. Excuse, sorry, excuse, excuse me. Can you get out of the way? So, that's how religious exemptions became red, white, and broken. A fantastic idea that was once the foundation for a society where people could pray the way they wish to pray has now warped into an excuse that people can use just to avoid the rules. I mean, the one upside is now I get to steal people's cars, I get to eat fish on a plane, cut in line everywhere I go, and even punch toddlers in the street. And if people say, hey, Trevor, stop being an asshole, I can say, yo, 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 I'm not being an asshole. These are just my religious beliefs. The public library, the best place to find a faded poster of LL Cool J. As much as people love libraries, nobody likes those late fees that pile up if you forget to return a book. Cause it's weird, right? Like librarians are the nicest, gentlest people in the world. And then they just spring on you. It's like, enjoy the cat in the hat, sweetie, and have it back by Tuesday or I will fucking drown you in debt. Well, now, some libraries are throwing in the towel. 
The nation's largest public library system says it's dropping all late fees for overdue books and other borrowed materials forever. In addition, library card holders have had the, their accounts wiped clean of any earlier fines. The idea is to encourage more people to use library resources. A spokesperson said that for people who can afford them, fines do little to encourage returning books on time. But for people who are struggling financially, those fines become a barrier to using libraries. 300 library systems across the country have already canceled fees. And while they typically generate three to four million dollars a year here in New York, library officials say they can make up the difference from other revenue sources. Wow, no more late fees. That's actually really exciting. I've never been to a bookless library before. No, but, th but this actually is great news, right? Instead of late fees just piling up forever, they'll just charge you the price of the book if you never return it, which makes the whole library experience so much more relaxed, you know? Like, I love libraries, but there's so many rules, so many rules. No talking, no smoking. No cockfighting rings. Loosen up, people. Although, I will be honest, I'm kind of going to miss late fees. You know, it was the only thing forcing me to actually finish my library books. Like, if I didn't have that nickel a week hanging over me, I never would have found out why that caterpillar was so hungry. I actually never found out. I just, I just, yeah, I never did. And like they said, libraries don't need late fees. They can find other sources of revenue. You know, like, I don't know, a vending machine that only sells food you eat quietly or renting out hollow books for assassins to keep their guns in. Hell, they could start renting out libraries on Airbnb. I think it's a perfect idea. It's quiet, there's furniture, you can have sex in it. There's a 75 year old woman who lives there who you can talk to, but don't have to talk to. It's just like an Airbnb. Moving on. These days we talk a lot about systemic racism and how subtle discrimination is baked into all levels of society, but it's important to remember that America is not all like that. There's also very obvious one-on-one -on -one racism. So imagine moving your family into your dream home to start a new life, only to find yourself subjected to nonstop harassment from your new neighbor. That's what a black family in Virginia Beach has been living with. They describe an escalating campaign of racial slurs, loud music, and monkey noises. <laughs> Whenever we would step out of our house, the monkey noises would start so racist and it's disgusting. Like, I don't even know how else to explain it. The minute I open my front door, his lights blink or my music or my song comes on. Local police say while the behavior is appalling, it is not criminally actionable. Are you shitting me? I, I, I can't even believe that this is a real story in real life. And honestly, I, I actually find this kind of racism so baffling because this guy may be playing loud music and noises to harass his neighbors, but he's the one closest to the music and the loud noises. Like, is your racism really worth it if you can't even have a conversation in your own house? Hey, honey, I'm really ruining life for that black family. What? No, I'm not coming back from anything. No, the black family. I'm going deaf. I love you too. And I'm sorry, man, but the police claiming that they can't do anything, that's such bullshit. Why don't they use one of those vague laws that they charge black people with all the time, like disturbing the peace, or your house has a broken taillight, sir. But yeah, I guess some people are just assholes. And without the police on their side, the Martinez family doesn't have a lot of options to stop the music and the monkey noises from playing. Although, one thing they could do is release some actual monkeys into the neighborhood. Yeah, because think about it, being racist is fun until a monkey hears mating sounds. Next thing you know, your racist ass is getting pounded by a monkey, all because you didn't want black neighbors. And finally, to the big celebrity news that everyone is talking about. No, not Britney finally being able to watch PG-13 movies. I'm talking about the radical interior decorating of pop star Megan Trainor. When you're married, it can often feel like you do everything together with your significant other. You know, watching shows, going shopping, you name it. But one celebrity, well, let's just say this couple is taking it to the next level when it comes to togetherness. Singer Megan Trainor had two toilets installed next to each other in her bathroom so that she and her husband can go to the bathroom at the same time. We've only pooped together twice. You? We pee at the same time a lot. White people. This really shows you how different relationships can be, right? 
Like you have some people who are like, I never fart in front of my spouse. And then you have other couples going, honey, I just booked a couple's dump for later tonight and I hope to see you there. And get that, they've pooped together not once, but twice. I mean, twice says a lot. Twice says you did it once and then looked at each other like, we should do that again. And they think this brings them closer as a couple, but I also think it could backfire. Excuse the pun. Like, if her husband ever gets constipated, she's gonna think he's having an affair. All I'm saying is I would never do this. Like, I only poop the normal way, right? Next to a stranger with a one inch wall between us. How God intended. The NBA. The only place where tall people aren't asked if they play basketball. Now, NBA players are used to taking charges, but usually from other players. This time, it's from the FBI. Breaking news, 18 former NBA players are charged with trying to defraud the league's health and welfare benefit plan out of nearly $4 million. Ex-Nets player Terrence Williams, ex-Knicks player Shannon Brown, Ronald Glenn Davis, and 15 other former players were indicted for conspiracy to commit health fraud and wire fraud. They're accused of submitting claims for medical and dental services they were never done. The ex-players got about $2.5 million. Okay, look, look, I know a lot of people are shocked by this, but guys, why are we surprised? Pretending to be hurt is a huge part of playing in the NBA. Which, by the way, I'm all for. I think men shouldn't be afraid to express when they're hurt. And once you retire, you gotta make money somehow. I mean, what's more dishonest? Stealing money from the health fund or Shaq claiming that Papa John's is good pizza? This is all fraud. We're all friends here, but hey, Getting caught is bad news for these players. And it's gonna be great news for whatever jail is about to get the best prison basketball team of all time. Can you imagine having these guys play? Hell no, I'm, I'm not guarding Big Baby Davis. That guy's huge. I might be a murderer, but I'm not crazy. But let's move on to a story about the mafia. You know, the guys who know a guy if you need a guy for that. The mob has been an American institution since the 19th century, but now, it's in the hands of millennials. And it turns out that just like mailing a letter or dressing up for work, they're not very good at it. Organized crime in New York is less organized than it used to be. Mob investigators say many of the clans are being fundamentally mismanaged nowadays. There's a common thought among the old guard of mobsters that the millennial generation hasn't properly learned the ropes. Also something that the old guard says is that the younger mobsters are always texting, which makes it so much easier for them to get caught. Okay, okay, fair criticism. You know, I understand that texting makes it way easier to get caught doing crimes, but here's my question. As a millennial, I would like to know, what else are we supposed to do, huh? Talk on the phone? Yo, I'll take life in prison over that shit any day. If you ask me the real problem here, with the mobsters texting is not getting caught, it's getting your point across. Because threatening to beat someone to death isn't as terrifying when it's done in a series of emojis. And obviously this isn't just a mafia thing. Every workplace is dealing with this kind of boomer versus millennial culture clash. You know, I bet even in the vampire community, you have older vampires mad at the younger ones. Lazarus, I've told you a thousand times, do not write blood on your Venmos. And finally, data breaches. They're a part of everyday life, from credit card companies, to government agencies, to Steve. I told you my pin in confidence, Steve. But today, it's video gamers who are getting owned. The popular game streaming platform Twitch is the latest online victim of a hack attack. Several tech media outlets say the company, which is owned by Amazon, confirmed an anonymous individual posted a 125 gigabyte file containing Twitch's data. The reports say the platform's source code was leaked along with how much top streamers on the service get paid. So far, no user data was leaked. Twitch says it's working on the problem. That's right, tons of data on the video gaming site Twitch was hacked. Although when you see what was actually leaked, I think this could have been way worse. You know, let's all be grateful that we didn't see any of Bowser's dick pics. I'm curious now though, do you think the carpet matches the shell? But there was some eye-opening stuff in that leak. We learned just how much some of these Twitch gamers make, up to $9 million. Yeah, and that's gonna add insult to injury, knowing that the guy who teabagged you last night in Call of Duty was doing it from a private jet. 
Oh, and in case you're wondering who the highest earning gamers are, topping the list was a gaming group, Critical Role. And at the bottom of the list, once again, was Chuck Schumer playing Snake on an old Nokia. Before we go, this week is Mental Illness Awareness Week. So please consider supporting the ACOMA Project. The ACOMA Project offers free virtual therapy and workshops for teens and young adults of color, as well as educating youth and their families on the importance of mental health. So if you wanna support them in this work, please donate at the link below.